his credentials to President Jame. Trainers from the Police Academy, Immigration and the Gambia Armed Forces Training School received training on gender-based violence courtesy of the Female Lawyers Association of the Gambia. South Africans and people the world over celebrate Nelson Mandela Day as the former anti-apartheid icon turns 95, and a prominent figure in Mali's presidential race withdraws his candidacy, citing excessive interference by France for his station. These and other stories come here this half hour. I am Isotomane. Thank you for joining us. Qatar's new ambassador to the Gambia, His Excellency Mohammed Al Kab, has promised to improve the already strong bilateral relations between Doha and Banjul. Ambassador Kab made the remark Thursday, shortly after presenting his credentials to the President, His Excellency Sheikh Professor Al Haji Dr. Yahya Jame, saying he intends to refocus efforts and action in areas that could yield both countries enormous benefits. Abdul Jai reports. He begins his new posting with an air of confidence, his objectives clearly defined, hinging lightly on the importance of keeping this almost sacred relationship between Qatar and the Gambia healthy. It is a relationship based on respect with leaders of both countries closely working together to enhance the future of Doha and Banjul. And this must have been clearly stated to Ambassador Muhammad, who was treated to a red carpet welcome, assuring him of a wonderful stay in the Gambia during his tenure. Received by President Jame, the two went behind closed doors to discuss perhaps the challenges of enhancing that special relations between their two countries, with him as a new ambassador having a very enormous role to play in the whole process. I met. Mr. President, and we talk uh, about, first of all, the relationship between Qatar and the Republic of the Gambia. As you know, since uh, 2004, that's when the embassy opened, Gambian embassy opened in Qatar, the relationship started to be stronger and stronger. My job now here, as I said to the Mr. President, is to facilitate and improve the relationship. And we lucky we have a very good ambassador, like uh, uh, ambassador we have. And uh, I hope, you know, the relationship between Qatar and the Republic of Gambia will be, you will see it soon, we have agreement, a lot of agreements already signed, and you will see them in the land, inshallah. He followed up his introduction with a list of areas he is keen to engage his Gambian counterparts in the years ahead to help improve the relations that exist between the two countries. We will start with double taxation, because it's very important, and secondly, civil aviation, and, you know, mining, because uh, Gambia is very rich, of, uh, so mining is very important also, we work. And uh, these things are very important. And uh, also, you know, I can't add anything because a lot, there are a lot of agreements. You will see them, inshallah, in the future. Having been formally introduced to the Gambian leader, Ambassador Mohammed can now assume his official role energized, of course, by the courtesy and the protocols that have been successfully completed on rehas. Abdunjai, GRTS. The president will be giving out the traditional Ramadan sugar at State House tomorrow, Friday morning, the 19th of July 2013. All governors and mayors are requested to come along with transport to carry their region's consignment. The Women Lawyers Association of the Gambia flag Thursday kick-started a three-day training of trainers for 20 personnel drawn from the Gambia Police Academy, Gambia Armed Forces and the Immigration Training Schools on international, regional and domestic legal frameworks to combat gender-based violence. The exercise, supported by the British High Commission, intends to strengthen the capacity of law enforcers as well as advocate for the inclusion of women's protection in their training curricula. Abdullah Baji has details in this report the rights of women and children continues to educate different groups in society. 
It is against this backdrop that this training targeted trainers from the Gambia Police Force Academy, Gambia Armed Forces Training School, and the Gambia Immigration Training School. Section 6 of the Act, therefore, makes it very clear that all hands must be on deck to ensure that violence is eliminated from public and private institutions and the society at large. It is therefore my view that the security outfits uh, should be at the forefront of this fight, as they are by their very nature protectors, and I dare say protectors of women. From this training, the flag president said security personnel are expected to attend to all victims of gender-based violence instead of sending them home for the case to be treated as family matter. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Ami Juf, speaking at the opening ceremony, said this training came at a time when the government of the day is spearheading the fight against gender-based violence. The coming together of stakeholders, notably the involvement of law enforcers in fighting what she called a societal ill is a move in the right direction. Minister Juf was of the belief that this training would better equip the participants in handling and prosecuting such cases. Always bear at the forefront that you need to earn the confidence of the victims for them to have the courage to come forward and report abuse cases. They must be assured that they would be safe, they would be helped, and they would be believed. At the same token, they must be safe in the knowledge that they will only be prosecuted for perverting the cause of justice if their original allegation is false and not where they feel unable to support a prosecution and withdraw. Describing gender-based violence as a deep-rooted practice in our society, the Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Usman Baji, commended FLAG for their role in stemming the tide. Your task in assisting women to exercise their equal rights and promote the full participation of women lawyers in the legal profession is no small task. Equally, the importance of widening access to justice by providing legal aid to poor women who are victims of gender-based violence, mostly rape and domestic violence, sexual exploitation, child abandon abandonment, forced marriage, and so on, cannot be overemphasized. CDS Baji also opined that what he called an interactive forum will be of great help to security forces on peace-building missions where the issue of gender-based violence tends to be high. Declaring the three-day forum open, the Deputy British High Commissioner to the Gambia, George Sheriff, expressed delight at partnering with what he described as an effective and passionate organization like FLAG. I would like to thank FLAG for their tireless work in upholding the rights of women and children in the Gambia. I also want to thank all of the, the law enforcement personnel here today for taking part in this training and giving up their valuable time helping to help those in need. I hope that this training program will be beneficial and it helps create a protective environment for women and children across the Gambia. The training by the Female Lawyers Association of the Gambia is the latest in a series of activities funded by the British High Commission to sensitize institutions, communities and religious leaders on issues revolving around gender-based violence in the country. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Abdullah Baji. Budget consultation was the subject of a one-day workshop organized by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs. The gathering delved into budget preparation as well as challenges inimical to the attainment of the Millennium Development Goals. Fatou Jassi reports. Officials of the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs have converged for a day's workshop on budget consultation. The forum will also provide participants the platform to review and examine bottlenecks deferring the attainment of the country's MDGs, central to which is the program for accelerated growth and employment page. One major hurdle to be tackled if the government is to realize its development blueprints is the debt situation, and this, according to Morsi, said Deputy Permanent Secretary, Minister of Finance, would be addressed through a strict and comprehensive debt management strategy. As instructed by Section 8 of the Financial Instruction, a budget committee should be established to review and formulate strategy plans based on the policies of government, allocate resources based on objectives, outputs and activities, among others. DPSCC also dilated on the budget process. Sectors are vigorously advised to adhere to both new format of budget template and resource envelope as they are sealing uh, during budget preparation process. Hence, the migration to MTEF. This has brought along many 
significant adjustment to align matters including sector strategic plans, MTEF budgeting, i.e. new charts of account, 